Welcome back, everybody. Kathy Arbor here, and we're going to be painting this snowy scene in a very loose watercolor. Uh, this is pretty much a, a beginner-friendly uh, watercolor that anyone can do. And I will be using uh, a watercolor paper today, and this is the watercolor paper that I'm going to be using. I really like it. It's not uh, cotton, but it's um, one of the better cold press, uh, 140 pound watercolor, and it's very inexpensive. So you can pretty well find that anywhere. Um, so this is what we're doing. And I'm just gonna be putting it on one of these smaller, I just cut this in half. You can do whatever size you want. Uh, I will put this on the um, um, what do you call it? Community page for everybody, including non-members. Hey, Lena, if you want to uh, try this yourself. Now, I did put up for my members on Patreon and my members in YouTube. Uh, this little ephemera pack that you guys can play with. Um, this is the first time I've done my ephemera pack. And I'm new at it. So uh, it depends on your input, whether you like this type of thing. Um, if you do, I may end up doing them every month so you can do your... Um, cut and paste collage, whatever you would use these for. I use them for painting. So these are references for me to paint. And if you want, you can do the same. You could do them in either watercolor or uh, acrylic. Uh, most of them are a watercolor look. So, um, You'll, you'll decide what you want to do. But I did a variety of different things. This one's December, so of course it's got to be uh, Christmas themed. And I did put a few things like tags in that you could cut out. And you can print these off as many times as you want. Uh, let me just get rid of these notifications so I can see what you guys are saying. Um... Hey, Joan, good to see you. So you can cut them out or uh, I'm not sure about stickers. You could probably make stickers out of these if you wanted to. Just cut them out. Um, so very Christmassy. Uh, this is on just copy paper. You could put yours on um, a glossy paper if you wanted to. Uh, you could size these smaller or larger, depending on what um, you want to do. They're all sizable, so you can um, play with them. A uh, little peeking, I like him. Uh, camera. <laughs> I had to put a camera in. Um, scarves and hats and a little animals. Uh, 25 for Christmas Day. Scarves. Now, this one didn't turn out. I, like I said, I'm new at this. <laughs> um, so they'll get better as I go if, if this is what you guys want. I love this guy. So these are all so cool because you can use these for drawing or for painting. And that's how I'm going to use them. I might actually use them in my... Um, I never know what to call it. Um, diary, journal. It's not a daily. It's whenever I find time. <laughs> so let's see. I have uh, a mix. So the it would be great for this um, type of journaling. So I have everything I have watercolor backgrounds I have you know from different magazines I do some of my own um, some are from magazines some are stickers 
that type of thing. So it would be great for this type of uh, book if, if that's what you like to do. Um, I haven't done this in, in quite a while, so... Yeah, that was a good picture. That was a Christmas get-together. Um, yeah, so... Maybe I'll, you know, give me some suggestions if you like this type of thing. And then, and give me suggestions of what you would need. Maybe you want um, specific dates or, or maybe, I don't know, ephemera of some sort that you use in your books. Uh, oh, thanks, Joan. I love this. I love this one. I think she's so cute. <laughs> now, I messed up on this one. For some reason, It when I was doing it, it didn't show up like this. But I think it, it kind of works. Because <laughs> you could cut this out here with the fireplace. Because it kind of looks like the deer in the, is sitting on the the no and um they're in front of the fire police <laughs> i think that kind of works <laughs> turned out uh, a little you know sometimes things just work <laughs> i like that one anyways um and then i did give two card fronts so that you could um if you are missing some cards for somebody you could uh, use these just have to cut them down and then um, paste them or glue them on to on the front of a card. Or you could paint these too. And then there's a girl. That's one of the that's the painting we did last week. Little <laughs> like the little funny deers. I think they're cute. And then one um, snowy background that you could use for whatever, actually. You could try to paint it, or you could uh, use it as a front cover, whatever. And these are all resizable, so that's what I have for this month. Maybe you guys would want more writing? I don't know. I thought these were cute and was a good start. Are they too big, too? Or do you want them smaller? Well, I guess you could make them smaller if you wanted to. So I'll keep them this size. And that's what they are. So that's for all members on here in YouTube and on my Instagram. And it's for all levels, just not one level. It's all levels. All right. So let's start. If you got any questions, let me know. So this is what we're doing. I guess I could put it up there. And that way you can see me do, um, do it. For a little bit. And bring in my palette. Now, I don't always do the exact thing as in the reference. A lot of times I um, change it up. I might use uh, bits and pieces of, of numerous ones, that type of thing. Um, this is a very loose watercolor. So the sky, as you can see, there's only two colors basically in this and that's a Payne's gray and probably a sienna or ochre color very 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 slight though if you can see that i don't know so the clouds are kind of wisping together there now you can see some outline of clouds here little bit of a hard edge on those so when you see a hard edge you know that um, this was put in without letting 
this part be wet. So wherever you wet your paper, you'll get this merging effect, this kind of atmospheric look. And it'll only go where your paper is wet. So this here, this white here, and right in here, that was not wet paper. So it stopped, and that's what gives you the hard line. So we're going to do the background first, um, and then we'll do the trees on top. And this is kind of atmospheric, so as you can see, these trees and these behind here are a little bit misty looking. And that's because they were painted when the paper was still a little damp. All right. <clears throat> so like I said, only two colors. So we have uh, Payne's Gray, or you could also use an indigo would work. And if you don't have indigo or Payne's Gray, you could also use a mix of uh, burnt umber with uh, ultramarine or French blue, French ultramarine or cobalt blue, a darker blue, and it'll give you kind of a grayish blue color. All right. Any questions? Um, this is 140 pound uh, watercolor paper. It's not. It's not 100% uh, uh, cotton though. Just cellulose. So let's do our. I'm gonna wet this top area, and I might just leave some areas that aren't wet. Um. We could all, always dry it too if you if you find that you want to make uh, a little more um, areas with the clouds. I'm just gonna wet. My, I've got a lot of uh, the color I need right on my palette already, so I'm just rewetting. And we'll put this color up in here. Now it should be a little bit thicker consistency so a little more pigment in there I love winter we're doing winter ones because of the so the, the skies and the snow it's so easy to do with uh, these indigo colors monochromatic type of uh, Okay, and maybe a little bit. I'm trying to see where my paper, or my wet areas are. And this will dry much lighter. So remember that. Okay, and then some umber color, raw umber. I'm just going to put it right over here. And again, we want a little bit in here. So I'm just going to wet this area. This is basically where a lot of the trees would be. The background's going to be a little more lighter. So I'll just dab in some of this. I want it very light. I don't want uh, it to dominate really any of my uh, colors so i put that on uh, dry paper here but i'm gonna soften the edges just a bit and maybe a little more blue in here and Soften this here, I think. You can soften wherever you want, wherever you think. Good. We're looking at this in a reverse way of thinking. So the white is basically our, our brightest clouds. 
guess I should have taped this down, but I didn't. So let's dry that. Now to do the second layer, I want this to be completely dry, like 100% dry. it over to the back because it soaks through. See how it flattens? Yeah, it curls, that means it still had some water in it. All right, I'll just hold it a little bit. All right, so now you can see, see some blooms there. I don't mind blooms, I like them, but if you don't like them, you have to make sure you don't have pooling water. That's what makes um, bloom. You have more water in one spot and it pushes the paint as it dries. I like them myself, especially in clouds. I think they look cool. All right. My brush coat. So I want. A little bit darker up in the corners there. Uh, we have to work our way from the background towards you to the foreground. Now in here, the way they have it, it almost looks like little trees like far away. So that these must be um, up on a mountain or something that you're just seeing the uh, top part over the clouds. So you're so high up, the clouds are below you and you're looking through. So to do that misty looking cloud area, all you have to do is wet that area that you're going to paint in. So I think I'm just going to do this here. And then you take your uh, 
Payne's gray or indigo, whatever color you're using. And I'm gonna use a smaller brush so I have a little bit more control. And you can, it will bleed out, but that's what you want. And I'm just gonna make these little, now it's a little, see how it dispersed really quickly. You can leave them like that if you like that, but if you want them not quite as flared out, then let the paper uh, dry out a little bit before you paint on top. And that way you can control how much it's gonna bleed out. So you, you don't want a really shiny area. Let's see. Uh, yeah, that's better. So you can just tap little trees in. And they'll blur out. I'm just using the tip of my brush. And it will dry lighter, so remember that. And the further you go up, the smaller they're going to be. So you can make some real small ones up there. I think those are, need to be a little bit more blurred out, so it must be a little drier on that part. So let's take a damp brush and just blur it out a bit. And maybe it's just few more there's quite a bit of water in here and we can also use um, gouache if you find you got too many you can always use a bit of gouache or just take a, a damp brush and go around the sides if they're a hard line that you don't want you just want a suggestion of trees. Hi, Dot. Good to see you. I hope you're doing better today. I, I heard the news. You're in my prayers. Hi. Hey, Amber. What? The animals have been peeing in... Oh, oh. <laughs> those are clouds, Dot. <laughs> yeah, dear. You're funny. Um, to get a little bit more of a um, cloudish edge, I guess you could say. Um We can fix that afterwards, either with, um, just drop some water. Let's do these ones right here. Uh, so they'll be down in here. Actually, we need to put a little bit of color on there. So I want a little bit of just slight color in here. It's kind of uh, an area where it's behind the other trees. And then I can take, before that dries, um, take some more. Let's see if this is ready or not. And these are going to be, no, nope, still not quite enough. But I can put a little bit more color in there. all about wet and the timing. And we could actually, well that, it's almost dry. Let's see. I don't want to get too ahead of myself and then forget about that area. So let's put in these tops. Let's see. 
No, that's too much water. Just using the tip of my brush and just kind of sweeping it downwards. And as you get into the uh, thicker areas on the bottom, that's wetter. So you're not going to have as much distinguishing uh, marks. You want that more faded out. And that's what that water down there is going to do. It's going to uh, make it more atmospheric looking. Let's put the three in, I guess. It's a little bit thicker of a consistency, a little darker down on the bottom. You can also take some out if you want a little bit more softer looking. It's all about softening those edges. Okay. Just add a little bit of water on the bottom there and it'll give you some blooming. Just a dab. All right, let's put in uh, some of these rocks here first, and then we'll put the, the uh, trees behind it. So first we're gonna do the lighter color. So soft edges, basically. And then a little bit darker on this side, I think. And a little bit uneven. Let's remember the rocks. I'm just making mine up. And we'll probably come in with a bit of uh, gouache. Put some of those lighter areas back in uh, maybe a little bit darker in here some of those really dark darks and I want it kind of atmospheric a bit too just a hint of uh, dark so let's see Put in some really darks in here. Remember, your dry areas won't, um, your paint won't spread to those areas. So <clears throat> you can always take out too. If you don't want something in one area or maybe there's too much, just use a damp brush. Soften some edges. Soften an edge here. That. Maybe some. Take it take a little bit there. And we will come in with some darker. Um, or lighter gouache areas. I'm just tapping. All rocks are different, so don't worry if, if uh, it's not the same as the reference. They're all different. Just want suggestions. All right, so while that's drawing, we can put in our uh, tree. So as you can see, there's snow on them. They're not perfect. They're up in the mountains, so they're going to be shaggy looking. Like 
um, damaged. That's how trees naturally look in the wilderness. They're not a perfect Christmas tree. Now these are a little bit on the brown side, so I'm going to use a little bit of this umber color that I have here. It's a burnt umber. And let's see, we'll put one right here. Yes. And they do get a little bit thicker on the bottom as they go down. And this one here is a little bigger. Um, and a little thicker than the other one. That. You can also mix a little bit of blue with that. And the brown and blue will kind of give you a gray color. Kind of just spot it in. And then we do have a little bit of, I'm going to get a smaller brush. We have uh, dead limbs or hints of where a limb used to be. It doesn't have all the parts to it anymore, but they were broken off by snow or whatever. Avalanches will do that. So you'll see bits, especially on pines. We'll see that. So we see quite a few limbs on here. And you can make them up. You don't have to be exact. You don't have to have the exact same number. Just play with it a little bit. Have fun, some fun with it. Some will have snow on them, so we'll We'll make them um, snowy once these are dry. Crisscross them because sometimes they are crisscrossed. Mm. Like I said, they're not not even either. They're um, these wilderness trees are quite um, interesting to draw. This one's got a topper that's kind of dead. Center lead. Uh, you could take a pen um, and make your real tiny, tiny um, branches, but I'm just going to try and do this with my paintbrush. Although I did have quite a bit of coffee this morning. <laughs> Kind of dark in there, I think. As we go in, I'm just going to add a little bit of that blue. Especially up here where it would be kind of in shadow from the limbs that have the needles on them still. shadows just playing get some, uh, get references if you have to if you're uh, not sure how to paint these get a bunch of reference look at the shadows Bunch of. It's funny you get notifications when you're streaming. <laughs> uh, mountain time. Hi. Mountain time mercantile. Awesome. A little bit down here. 
Maybe a little bit darker. Okay. Now the, um, while well, that's drying, I don't want to mess that up. I'm going to paint some of the other ones uh, that are behind here. So it's going to be the same type of thing. We're having it very atmospheric looking. So wet brush. And let's see. Just wet some areas in here. Down in here. And then same thing, we're just putting in the limbs of the needles. Now this one here does have, see how it has the white? You could either leave that, don't kind of paint around it, or you could use a gouache over top. It's a whole lot easier using the gouache. Okay, so you want to make sure that it's not too wet. Just seeing light on it. We have, we have one right here, we have one here, I'm just putting the, uh, how many I want in here. I know they're dispersing, right there, and let's, uh, I don't have any water there. A little bit more of a buttery consistency. Paint more pigment on my um, brush. And then just a little, little, little marks sweeping. Remember, these are uh, wild. They're not Christmas trees, so they're going to be lopsided. There's many ways you can paint them, too. So you can do a sweep down and then little marks. That's one way of doing it. Sweep down and then mark that. And then take your brush, big brush, and just touch around it so it kind of disperses in areas. You kind of want that atmospheric look. I don't want it to be real definable, especially on the bottom part, gives it that misty look. So another one in here. So the tops, basically the tops are the parts that are more defined than, than the uh, bottom areas. That. Another one in here. Ooh, too much water in my brush. So a little bit. You could use a spray bottle too if you wanted to. And it'll give you kind of a atmospheric. Look, I don't want it going into there because it's behind that tree. Like that. And then there's one in here I forgot. Ah. All the rush with the shows and Christmas orders for the kids are winding down now. 
I am hoping to do a few videos. Oh, awesome. So you've been busy. A good year. Good. Wasn't sure how it was going to be this year with the uh, economic situation that we're all in. Things are pretty tough for a lot of people. That's why I like to do stuff that's not necessarily uh, go out and need this to do this type of thing. Okay, so let's try that. Yes, we've had snow for the last week. We got about six inches. We had we actually had <laughs> snow squalls. So lake effect snow. So <laughs> we're switching we're switching uh, weather patterns with each other. <laughs> Not cold though, not real cold, but snowy. All right, so let's do this here and it's gonna basically the same thing. Um, so we'll do each. Mm, they're more defined, so um, I think I'll just do the bottom first and while that's uh, just drying up a little bit we'll start from the top of the other ones. They're more defined so you're gonna have more. Uh, they're not like really uh, I can see every little needle type of thing, more or less. And sweeping around and just kind of, just with the very tip of your brush, make some marks. The, the tree will... Um, show whether what it is like the shape of the tree so you don't have to worry about you know is this looking like a christmas tree you don't want christmas trees you want uh wild looking trees So some areas are going to have a little bit more pigment than others. You just drop pigment in and that'll give it depth. I don't have to uh, actually draw um, leaves or anything like that. And here we want to put just a few marks. You could also put uh, water on if you want it to uh, soften a bit. Show you in a minute. 
these these trees are pretty battered when they're up the mountains. You probably have some fantastic uh, photos, Carol. I remember when I was in Jasper. Oh, such a gorgeous area there. That Need some more down in here, a little darker. Uh, Yolanda missed a day. Um, hey, Devin. Oh, missed you. Um, Oh, it is amazing. I have lots of photos. Feel free to use them. Oh, awesome, Carol. That would be great. I might take you up on that. I do have um, some from my uh, sister-in-law that travels a lot. She's always going there. But... You know how you're always running out of things to paint. Okay, I'm going to just, some areas, I'm going to just take away some. Just with a cloth here. Sometimes you don't want as much. Okay, you can also remove some with your uh, paintbrush too. I just like to play with it. that you get shadows or the ones behind there maybe are a little bit darker or lighter it's a little bit back in there a little darker maybe right on the bottom here just going to throw a little bit of that in there that looks pretty good and remember, this will dry lighter. All right, so let's dry that. You're welcome, Devin. I can't wait to see what you do with them. Um, like I, in the beginning, I was telling people that they can be used for prompts or for cutting, or I use them for ideas to paint and draw. So feel free to paint and draw with them too. Spread the word. <laughs> it's always good. Okay, so see how it draw some areas dry lighter than other areas. So you might want to go back and touch up some areas that are needing maybe a little bit more color. I'm just going to add more or less along the uh, inside area here. Might be a little bit darker in there.
and make a little, I'm going to put some marks along the trunk of the tree. You could use a pen too, if you want. I'm going to make these a little bit of, of water on these, and I'm going to just drop in some of this darker tones here and there. So I like what that did. Just kind of showed the little bit of marks that used to be on the tree, but not real defined. All right, now I do have some blade proof white, or if you don't have that, you can also use uh, regular gouache. Which, oh my God. Windsor Newton designer gouache in white. And I think I'm going to use Here's my little palettes. I just have these little palettes. They're actually uh, lids to my pan pastels, but once you get put them in those um, trays, you don't need them. So they're good for palettes. <laughs> Multi-use. All right. So you want a little bit of water on your brush. Now we can uh, go in. Let's see, this is still wet, so it's probably gonna. Yep. Oh, cool. Well, maybe that's too wet, though. We could lighten areas if you want. Mm, let's do some of these. along the tops of the rock be a little bit snowy so we can put some of that on just here and there more or less on the top areas Remember, the rocks are um, they have a lot of uh, cracks and unevenness. So you're not going to have uh, like a smooth rock like you would see in, say, a stream. You're going to have uh, lumps and bumps and multi layers. And they're all different, so don't think that anyone's going to say that's not the way that rock looks because they don't know. Make them any way you want. This one might have a little bit going up there, maybe there. Got maybe a
little bit lighter in here, maybe. They're just fun to play with, really. Might have to go back and um, whiten them up a little bit. The thicker the paint, the more likely it won't um, need a second coat. Let's see. This should be dry enough now. So I'm going to just put a little bit. A little show of snow on here. Actually, I want it a little bit less defined. So I'm going to wet this area, I think. So it's a little blurry. Okay, and I'm going to do, let's see, just a little bit down here. Not much, though, just a bit. You can always touch things up, too. Take some off like that. Maybe a little bit in here. Wet the bottom so it kind of softens a little bit. This is kind of rocky back here a little bit. So I'm going to wet it and then take more of a watery consistency. Just put a little bit of snow cap rock there. Yeah, like that. Okay. And then we can put some on the bigger tree, the ones that are in front. So you're seeing a little bit more, uh, more of a defined line. Um, so it's kind of a snow, looks like snow was going sideways, <laughs> which it does. Um, and then these, some of these, just on the tops of some of these branches, they would have that. A little bit. Some of the snow on the, the boughs. Not a lot. But you might have to go back and, and do it again. This is kind of uh, losing its color. I might have to use the bleed proof white. That one is a little bit easier keeping the white color. Let's see. Let's try some of this. So this is the Doc Martens bleed proof white. I'll just use the lid. So it's supposed to keep its whiteness a little, a little better. Let's see. Let's 
just very, very lightly. The tip of my br uh, brush. You gotta have a fairly uh, good brush for this type of thing. Nice tip. Uh, maybe like that. Just a few little areas. Like that. Snow has hit them and Lots and lots. You could use a white gel pen for the very small ones too. A little bit on the trunk of the tree, the side, want the same side as the other one. But you don't want it going on both sides. I suppose you could, though. It shows it on both sides on this one, but I think that kind of looks a little weird. Uh. A little bit on the bottom here. And then a little bit on the rocks too, on the very, very tops where it would be the brightest. Where the shine would be. Snow has um, shadows. So I'm just on the tops parts, basically. Those areas. Should look good enough. In here. Like that. Okay. Now you could do this with the clouds too. Um, the whitest parts of the clouds. So where the sun would be shining on them. So uh, let's see. Yeah, turn it. So you're you're thinking of the edge of the cloud. So When it's um, yeah, 
and you could make areas uh, softer. So the one at one side will be bright and defined and the other end will be soft because that was that's going into the cloud part so you're not going to have a defined edge unless you have multi uh, clouds around there let's see I'm going to put a little bit, I think. Mm. Maybe in here. Maybe a little bit of. Just to show what's kind of uh, land in here. And. Misty. Okay, I want it kind of misty in here too, just on this edge. So I'm just taking my side of my brush, basically. This may not come up. Let's try some. Yeah, that's better. A little bit of lead proof white over top of that will soften it. Yeah, that does the job. Just soften this area up a little bit. That was a bit too pronounced. Maybe just a mm, a little darker up here, maybe. The sky, the higher you go up, the darker your sky. So, right in the corner here, we'll make that dark. Bring it down a little bit. And I think I'm gonna wet this area here and put some dark in there too. I think that looks better. Get down the side a little. I'm gonna take this up. off on that edge. Good. Well, I think it's looking pretty good. Let me see that. I'm going to put a little bit more on here. Brighten that up a little bit. Too much water. Uh, all right, now let's dry that. Ah, oh, thanks, Joan. Thanks, everybody.
Take care, um, Carol. Hope to see you soon on your uh, channel. All right. Now, this part where you just kind of check it, just look at it. If you want, you could step away and go have a coffee or. But now you look at your brightest brights and your darkest darks, and where do you need some more? So, this is a rock that goes down like that, and then there's one behind it. So, right in here, would be darker right behind it. And that'll help show that by putting that dark in. Just softening the one edge. Like that. And then also where there's little bumps and holes in the rocks, you can emphasize them. Uh, so wherever uh, you might have a hole. Say this is a hole in the rock there. The side, maybe it goes down. And you can just emphasize that a little bit more by adding some darker color to it. Same within here. Now you could also uh, add pen work if you want. Always soften the, the one, the one end of it. There's always a hard edge, and then there's a soft edge. bit more in there. That. They're fun to do. I like doing these. Because there's, there's no getting them wrong. Because <laughs> every rock is different. So you want to experiment in, in shadows. Try doing some rocks. Yes, a real dark area there. Under the that white. Play. It's just paper. It's experimenting, having fun. And you could also, if you want a little bit more um, texture, just wet a little bit on your paper and then just. Drop some color in. I'll give you a little bit of texture. play. See what you can dream up. Come 
put salt on it too. It would be another um, awesome look. All right. Now, we can either leave it like that, or you could put uh, some snow on there, too. It is kind of cloudy looking. Um, what do you think? Should I put snow on or leave it? I think I'm going to put a little bit darker in here though. Just on there. I'm going to drop in a little bit more dark blue indigo. Still a few pockets. like that. Just don't want really uh, defined edges when you're doing the background areas. A little better. All right. Uh, so any suggestions? Snow or no snow? Snow? All right. We're going to do snow. Devin wants snow. <laughs> I, I keep forgetting to bring my uh, toothbrush down. I don't think I have another one here. Let's see. I want a fairly stiff brush. Oh, there it is. Yay! All right. I'm going to use this gouache in here. Mm, no, I better use the... Well, I'll just dip my... I want it. And then just this will give you fairly smaller um, there snowflakes. You can put bigger ones in too. There's the snow. Cool. I like it. Let's dry it. Why is it right to snow? Too late. <laughs> Very well, it's kind of. It'll calm down a little bit so it's not so in your face. Or is it 
it takes up the color that's underneath. Now it's calmed down, not as uh, bright. I kind of like it. Way before I spill it. As you know, it's quite possible with me. All right. Isn't that pretty? I like it. So not that difficult to do. And really, the rocks, anyone can do. Every rock's different. Um, clouds are all different, so there's... Nothing here that has to be precisely what it is as far as, you know, something like an animal or a face or, you know, these are pretty easy to do. So give it a try. You could um, put more uh, pen work in if you wanted to also, but I leave that up to you. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll give it a try. And I will put the um, reference photo on the community page here in YouTube and also on the Patreon. If you want to download that, you can and uh, use it for cards or a reference, whatever. It is a uh, license. I have licensed it. So um, you're welcome to use it. You're welcome. All right. Well, I'll let you guys go and you have a fantastic day and happy creating. Bye for now.